So two last things to show you. You'll, you'll notice that we have one remaining uh, pencil sketch, which looks like two elliptical shapes overlapping one another, but we have no circles. So um, don't get too excited, but we're going to draw two circles. I'm going to pick up my zoom tool and then zoom into that region, hold down the space bar to pan, and then I will go to my tools panel and click and hold down on whichever shape is visible. At the moment it's the rectangle tool and I can choose the ellipse tool, which you can also reach by tapping the L key on the keyboard, as you can see from the pop out menu in there. Now it will um, pick up the same fill and stroke as the other objects because they were the last things that we had selected. So you'll find it's got a blue fill and a black stroke. And then from here, what we can do is if you wish to try and trace or match something that's uh, circular or elliptical, my suggestion would be hover your cursor level with the left edge of that item and level with the top edge. Where those two meet, that's the best place to start drawing an elliptical shape. So I'm going to click and hold down mouse down, keep it held down and drag out, and that will draw an elliptical shape. Obviously, you can make it more elliptical, you can make it wider and taller, but if you want it to be a perfect circle, which we do, hold down the shift key, and that will again link the width and height so that they are proportional with one another. When you've got it to about the right size, you can let go of the mouse and then release the shift key on the keyboard. I'll switch back to my selection tool and then hover over that object, hold down the Alt key and click and drag to create a duplicate so they match the pencil sketches now. Let go of the mouse, let go of the Alt or the Option key. I'm also going to just pan up a little bit and select both of them and then create a duplicate of them because I've got two techniques to show you here and then click away. I need to create a kind of a crescent moon shape in here. Now we have to have two shapes. One that's going to be left behind and one that's used as a cutting tool to cut away the other object. So the cutting tool itself has to be at the front. So I can click on this one, right click and then choose arrange, bring to front. So we have to use the front object to cut away whatever's behind. Then crucially select both of the shapes and head to Pathfinder in the properties panel and click on minus front which will use the front most selected object to delete anything that is behind in the current selection, leaving us with a crescent moon shape. And then I'll, I'll click and I'll just move that to the side. And then I will just pan up, select these two and drag them to match the pencil sketch in there, roughly speaking, and then pan back. Now the other technique is to use something called shape builder. So that is located just here in the tools panel. You can reach it by pressing shift and M on the keyboard. When I click on that tool, you should really always have the objects that you want to affect selected already, as I do. And then really what the Shape Builder tool does is it takes the two most common things used in Pathfinder that we've seen to add things together or to remove them from one another. And this will allow you to drag through shapes to do the same thing. Now, by default, it will add them together. So if I just click and hold down the mouse, keep it held down and drag through those shapes. Every time I'm going to create an interaction, it's going to shade them in a hatching uh, pattern in there. When I let go of the mouse, it combines them together. Now, that's just to show you what the default mode does. I don't want to do that because we want a crescent moon shape. So edit, undo merge. Instead, now if I hold down the Alt or the Option key, that plus next to my cursor changes to a minus. And I can click and drag through the first and the overlapping region. When I let go of the mouse and then the key on the keyboard, you're left with a crescent moon shape. So that doesn't require you to concern yourself with which shapes are at the front or the back. It simply looks at overlapping regions. And I'll go to view and I'll choose uh, fit artboard in window. Go back to my selection tool and then go to file and choose save. So those are different ways in which you can combine or remove one shape from another. So the very last thing to do is to take the clouds over to our poster and artboard number one. I'm going to leave the um, the crescent moon shape here. You are, of course, welcome to take it and put it onto the design if you wish to. But uh, from here, I'm going to, with a selection tool active, drag across just those two clouds, go to edit, choose copy, go down to my artboard switcher and jump right back to the very first artboard. I'm still in a layer called sky, so I can from here just go straight to edit and then choose paste. 
Now, uh, they do have a, obviously a blue fill and a black stroke. So with them still selected as they will be by default, change the fill to white, press return, and then click on the stroke appearance and then set that to none, which as we saw in a previous video, that's always uh, at the top left hand side uh, for no color and press return. Um, I'll click away and then just click on one of those clouds, hover over one of the corners, hold down the shift key, drag to the opposite corner to scale down, let go of the mouse and the shift key, and then click on this cloud and just scale it down a touch, shift and drag. and then click away. 